You know, I've got this crash symbol right here. It sounds like this. So it's got a really hard attack and then uh, like any symbol, it trails off slowly over time over the course of about two bars. Actually, to make this easier, I'm gonna cut this right at two bars and just delete that last part. Wouldn't it be great if we could reverse this crash symbol and use it as a lead in to itself, kind of like as a swooshing crash into the beginning of the musical phrase. Well, reversing is a pretty common audio trick and you can do it in logic. Let me show you how. I'm gonna press escape, escape to get my pointer back and I'll double click the crash to open up the sample editor. Right here in the functions menu, there's a bunch of options you can use to change the audio file, including this one right here, reverse. However, at the moment it's grayed out. And that's because this crash is an Apple loop. As it turns out, Logic does not allow you to use the sample editor's functions on Apple loops because these functions permanently change the source file. And you probably don't want to do that. If you use this Apple loop in any other song and you permanently change it, you're going to have a big problem. So in order to reverse this Apple loop, I'm going to have to change it into a regular audio loop. I'll do that on a copy. So I've just held option and drag to create a copy of this Apple loop. And now with this copy selected, I'll choose audio, convert regions to new audio files. And if you love key commands, that's option command F. Okay, so when I select this option, we get a save region as dialog. And I can now type in a new name. I'll call this long crash symbol audio file. Why not? Now here's a little gotcha. You have to make sure you change the file format to something other than AIF or CAF. If you choose one of these two formats, your newly created audio file will just be another Apple loop. That's a bit of a problem, so I'm going to change it to a WAV file. Let's press save. And you can see that this file is now a WAV file. Here's a symbol for an audio file. It's just a single circle, meaning it's a mono audio file. Well, if I double click that file to open it in the sample editor, and you know what, before I go and reverse this file, let me just drag down in the bottom left corner of the track header so we can clearly see the crash and thus see the effects of this edit. Next, I'll click the sample editor's functions menu and look at that, all of my functions are now available. So if I choose reverse, we get a final warning dialog. It says, are you sure you want to apply reverse to the selected area? This will change 235,200 samples in the audio file, blah, blah, blah. Basically, all this says is you're about to change the original samples in the file. That's a destructive edit. So make sure you know what you're doing. I do, so I'll process this. Well, you can see the file's actually reversed. The crash part of the symbol jumped to the end of the file. If we play it, here, I'll turn off the cycle range and just start at bar eight. You can hear we've got a lead in to the actual crash. Let's solo and listen to just the crash part. Well, at this point, I'll probably want to go and do a little more work to smooth out the transition between these two crashes. But nonetheless, I want to show you that technique because reversing audio files can sometimes lead to some very interesting effects.